other fish. Well, good afternoon. This is Father Fish. And I have a topic in mind today. It's a topic that has been largely forgotten in the tropical fish hobby. And yet, when I was a child, it was all the rage. It was what everyone talked about. Let me go back a bit. My grandmother, my mother's mother, was born about 1900, grew up and lived in Berlin, Germany. She came to the U.S. when she was 14, so it was just at the beginning of the First World War. After the war, she went back, and then a year or two later, returned and stayed in the U.S. Well, so much for family history. That's not what's vital. What's important about this is that Germany is one of the very first countries where tropical fish was a popular hobby. England was another. In Germany, as a child, she had a fish tank. Now, she had a fish tank before there was electricity or at least before it was popular, before there were things like air pumps and heaters, and even much in the way of lights. So, by the time I came along in 1940, my grandmother had been in the States for 25 years or more. She had a grown, two grown daughters, and yet she still had a fish tank. As I remember it, it was a 20 gallon lawn and it sat on a radiator. Now if you don't know what a radiator is, you're showing your snowflake age. A radiator was a means of bringing hot water into a room through a series of circular metal pipes that heated up the room. The water was heated in a boiler in the basement and her fish tank sat on a metal pan that sat on top of the radiator which was positioned just under a southern exposure window. So, she had natural light coming into the tank. She had heat in the winter coming up from the radiator and she did not have an air bubble and she did not have a filter and she did not even have a light on her tank. What she did have was a substrate that was dirt and sand. Dirt that she got from her backyard that she got from the beach. And in this, she planted plants. Some of those plants came from a local creek. Others came from wherever she was buying her fish. There were little pet shops back then. They were little. They were a lot like mine. They were not fancy, but they were busy places run by people who had a love for tropical fish. In her tank were some plants and some fish. I remember guppies, flatties, and angels. There might have been more, but that's what I remember. Now, what's important about this? Well, at around that same time, to give you an idea of the popularity of the hobby at the time, there was a man whose last name was Innes, I-N-N-E-S, and he published a book. My grandmother gave me a copy of that book when I graduated from high school. It was the 20th 
edition of a book that he first published in 1934. The very first sentence in the very first paragraph in that book talks about a balanced aquarium. And this is the concept I want to discuss with you. The concept of a balanced aquarium. Now the reality is, anytime you put water in a tank and put a fish in it, it struggles immediately to create a balance. The extent of the balance is determined by the length of time the aquarium is able to sustain itself. We know a few people here on YouTube who have aquariums that have to have water changes on a regular weekly basis. Those are not balanced aquariums. In point of fact, there are aquariums that become imbalanced very quickly. Imbalanced by virtue of too many proteins, too many things taken out of the water and not replaced, too many things put in the water and not taken out or not used in a more effective way. The tank lacks balance and so the solution is to change water. Now that's a perfectly acceptable and effective way to keep fish and lots of people keep fish that way. There's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly effective and with the kinds of equipment that we have today it makes it possible to keep fish in tanks that lack any kind of balance at all. But that's not what this is. This is a balanced tank. We're more to the point it's a tank becoming balanced. And the longer it sits, the more balanced, the more stable it becomes. After about a year, it'll be pretty rock solid. After five years, you could walk away from it for a year or more, ignore it completely, and everything would be thriving, including the fish. A balanced aquarium is one in which the plants, the animals, the bacteria, the very water chemistry remain in a kind of equilibrium that makes it possible for them to be able to be sustained for a very long period of time. Now, why is that important? It's important for a very simple reason. It's important because that is the nature of a body of water. Water seeks to achieve balance. In point of fact, all of nature seeks to achieve balance. Whatever happens to it, that, that may disturb one aspect of it, everything else shifts in the balance in order to maintain that balance. The same is true in a fish tank. If you suddenly were to pour a can full of food, as some two-year-olds have been known to do, some 20-year-olds too, and probably some 50-year-olds, Nevertheless, if you poured a whole container of food into the tank, what would happen? Well, initially, it would foul. It would begin to deteriorate. It would build up bacteria. But if you left it, what would happen? It would seek balance. It would seek equilibrium. Now, it might go through a tough time where a lot of things die. It depends on how extreme 
the imbalance is. But the tank will always seek to achieve balance. That's its nature. That's what it does. So a good fish keeper seeking to maintain a balanced tank works with the tank, trying to help the tank to achieve what it's trying to achieve. We see it, it's a living thing. It's not just a bunch of organisms. It's a living environment, a biological environment, and a chemical environment that's seeking to maintain itself in a way to be able to sustain life. So keeping fish alive and happy and healthy it's really a very easy thing to do. You simply give them what they need. Not what you want to give them, because they're not little people. You don't keep feeding them until they're full. But give them what they need. You give them dirt, not sterility. You would not keep your child in a sterile environment, nor should you try to keep your fish in a sterile environment. You want an environment that can handle some decay, that can convert it to something beneficial, that will be able to provide for the growth of plants and for the life of the animals living in it including the little bacteria that are the foundation of the aquarium. Without beneficial bacteria, life cannot exist in one of these environments. So, to draw this tight, think about what you're doing. Think about what you're creating. Think about the balance and the harmony that you're seeking to achieve. My friend Lucas understands this very well. And if you look at his tanks, they're very simple, very stable, very strong, solid environments. And that's what we try to do here at Father Fish as well. We try to teach those principles so that you can have healthy, happy fish that enjoy where they're living and that show it. So, keep coming back. Keep looking and learning. Thank you so much for your support. It means so much. And thank you for your fish, for keeping them healthy, for looking out for them, for trying to find ways to do better by doing less, by doing the right thing. Bye for now. Father Finch saying, see you again soon.